All right, guys, as promised, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple force problems. I really want you to see uh, the appropriate way to attack any sort of force problem. So the picture I've drawn here is just a flat surface, and there's a mass of 10 kilograms uh, sitting on that surface. And this blue vector here, which is labeled F sub A, uh, F sub A is what I use for the applied force. Okay? The applied force is 150 newtons acting towards the right or the positive x-axis. So, well, oftentimes the question is, what is the acceleration of the object that you are applying the force to? And so that's how we're going to solve here. Now, right now I only have the blue applied force vector acting on it. I should draw the force of gravity vector, which is down here. And because there's gravity, the resultant force of the normal force is going to be upwards. However, the first case is going to be without friction. And so we don't really worry about forces in the y-axis here. Okay? They're not going to really affect anything. The acceleration is only going to happen in the positive x direction. So the setup, the first thing that you have to do as a successful physics student is draw the appropriate force diagram. So you have to label the forces that are acting on the mass. So we've done that. The next step is to write what we call an F-net equation. The net force is all of the forces added together that are acting on the mass. In this case, the only F net that we're concerned with again is in the X direction, and so then we write F net X is equal to the applied force, FA. This is the true physics behind it, okay? The next step we're going to do is algebra and mathematical, but if you can get to this point where you're saying the F net, all the forces in the X direction equal just the applied force, you're good. Now we can go ahead and expand here, and F net X is going to become mass times acceleration in the X direction, because that's the definition of the net force. And the applied force here is equal to 150 newtons. And now I can substitute the mass in here, which is 10 kilograms, and say 10 times the acceleration is equal to 150 and therefore the acceleration is going to be equal to 15 meters per second squared. So, in a frictionless case here, we got the acceleration to be 15 meters per second squared. Now I'm going to show you a case where the friction, the coefficient of friction is going to be 0.5, okay, which is different than the previous zero value that we had. <clears throat> When we start adding friction into the problem, we have to make a change to our force diagram. And I'm going to add the friction vector in red. Friction is going to oppose the motion of the box, and therefore the friction vector is going to point to the left. So I have the red vector labeled as F sub F. Again, let's go ahead and write our F net equation. So F net in the x direction is equal to the applied force FA and since FA is pointing towards the positive right or the positive x-axis and the force of friction is pointed towards the negative x-axis we are actually going to subtract the force of fr friction from the net force values and so now I have F net is equal to FA the applied force minus FF the force of friction and now again, this is the physics behind it. If you can do this, then you can solve any force diagram problem. Because the next step now just involves uh, a little bit of substitution. Okay? And so now we are going to do an expansion step here. And again, F net X is going to expand to the same thing, M A X. The F applied is going to expand to the 150 that it is. And the force of friction is going to expand to mu times the normal force, which is the definition or the equation that represents the force of friction. So now that we've taken care of these substitutions, we can start plugging in some values. So for my mass, again, I'm going to put 10. So 10 AX is equal to 150 minus mu is 0.5 times the normal force. Well, from the previous video on the normal force, you should recognize that since we are on a flat surface, the normal force is equal to mass times gravity. So I can put those values in here. 
and the mass is 10, and gravity is about 10. And I'll just go ahead and say 10 for simplicity, but in actuality, if we're using a calculator, we can use 9.8. And now let's go ahead and solve here. So 10 times 10 is 100, times 0.5 is 50. So I have 150 minus 50 is equal to 10 AX. And now AX is going to be equal to 10 meters per second squared. So we can see that as I added friction, my acceleration value went down from 15 to now 10, which definitely makes sense. And that's an important part of physics is to get logical behind your, uh, behind your processes and your techniques, okay? But this is really the technique. It's called uh, finishing up a force diagram and solving it using F net equations. Okay? And as long as you can do the step where you are writing the F net in terms of your actual forces, you'll find a lot of success in this material. Alright, I'm going to do another problem with an inclined plane next, so stick around.